Hello there, welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be pairing two of the BH Cosmetics Birthstone palettes. This is the Peridot palette and this is Sapphire. I've been wanting for a while to use these together and this is what I came up with. So if you'd like to see how I did it, then don't go anywhere. And if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom who loves to play with colorful eyeshadow. So if you want to see more colorful content on your timeline, such as tutorials and ranking videos, things like that, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing because I am currently uploading about three videos a week. Okay, so I'm trying to get this look done before my baby starts fussing. She's currently upstairs playing happily in her crib. You might hear her on the monitor. She's so cute and she's making the cutest noises, um, but she's happy, so I'm gonna let her go for a little while. I'm gonna start this look using a detail crease brush from e.l.f. This is relatively dense and it's not very big and it's also pinched, but it's more pinched on one side than the other, so it's kind of a little half moon sort of shape in the loosest of terms. I'm gonna go into the Sapphire palette and take the shade Confidence, which is like a teal matte, more green than blue, I think. Um, and I'm gonna place this just in my crease. This was actually one of the colors I was most excited about in this palette because in a Sapphire palette, I expected to see more blues and purples. And uh, this palette certainly has those, but Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, I've already primed my eyes using the Glam Light Icing Primer in the shade White Frosting. Anyway, this palette certainly has the blues and purples, but I was really excited to see that it also had a green matte shade because not only does it complement nicely the other shades in the palette, but it's also just an unexpected color, I think, for a sapphire-themed palette. Now, I am not a gemologist. I don't know if... I mean, I know sapphires come in blue and pink. I've, I know white sapphire is a thing. I don't know if, if there's a green sapphire, but I think, I think when it comes to gemstones, it's a matter of chemical composition. And so maybe there are green sapphires, but even if there are not, this is a nice color complement for the other shades in the palette. So I'm just putting this in my outer corner crease area and blending it towards the bridge of my nose, but I'm not gonna pull it in super far because I want the inner corner to remain pretty light, like a light toned or medium toned color. Spring is here, is it? it is in full swing. We had a tremendous springtime storm last night and the birds are just chirping their hearts out outside the window. I love it, so exciting. And we've seen trees bloom overnight. Love it. I'm taking a different detail crease brush from e.l.f. This one is much more fluffy and loose and it's also a little bit bigger. It's kind of a, it's almost a fan-shaped brush, and I'm gonna dip into the Peridot palette into the shade Generous. It's like a peach tone matte. I'm going in very, very lightly because I don't want this to take over, and I'm just gonna use this. This is the closest I have to a more neutral tone, and I wanna use it to blend out into my skin this green. So I'm just placing it on the very edge of the green to soften a little bit and blend out towards the brow bone. It might end up looking muddy if I'm not careful. It's gonna have a bit of an orangey tint to it, which is okay. I just wanted something to transition from the green of the shadow into my skin. Um, because my skin's not naturally green, so. Uh, if I had a much, much lighter tone green, or if I were pairing a different palette, like, I have plenty of palettes. I could have grabbed a pastel palette or something and used a light or, or even just used a neutral tone to blend this out but because today's looks are staying within the two palettes I have to work with what I've got and this is like the closest that I could come up with for a skin tone shade so just really carefully working those edges and trying not to dip too far over onto the the green because I don't want to muddy it all up and I'll bring this color down onto my lower lash line a bit as well I have uh, a little bit of staining right now on my lower lash line, you probably notice. I might look like I have an infection, but I do not have an infection. It is just staining from a pretty reddish purpley look yesterday, which I loved. And you'll see, it'll be posted pretty soon. All right, that blended out those edges okay. I'm gonna dip back into the, um, the, the Confidence shade, the green matte from Sapphire, and just pack on a little bit more so that color doesn't get lost. I'm packing it below the transition line though, so I'm deepening out where I want it deep and I'm not basically, you know, nullifying what I just did. And I'm also carrying the confidence shade onto the corner of my lid, like onto the, the outer third, I guess, of the lid. 
You know, I do really like that shadow, this confidence shadow. It's probably my favorite color in the sapphire palette. And I'm a little bit torn, like, is it worth keeping the palette just for that shade? I don't have this, this kind of shade that I can think of in any of my other palettes. The Lush Life palette has a greenish one that's like this, but I don't think it's as blue. And uh, Robbie D. Christie's FR Sight palette has an emerald color, but it's again, it's not as blue, it's more green. This reminds me of the ABH Norvina Volume 3, I think. Or is it the 5? It's the one, I think it's the one that's more orangey, but has a couple of shadows like this, which really pop away from the palette and are, are definitely distinct and interesting. It's that one. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I'm going back into the Peridot palette and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a medium blending brush. This is more dense and it's also pinched. It's sort of a C-shaped but fluffier. I'm gonna go into the shade Outgoing from the Peridot palette, which is the matte yellow, more of a marigold color. And I'm gonna place this on my lid space from the inner corner all the way out to meet those, that green. I'm just placing this yellow on the rest of the lid, basically filling in whatever space I didn't use um, with that green shade. As you can see, it's kind of a two-tone thing going on. And these colors in no way are going to blend together. You just have to accept it. So when you get to the point where they meet, just gently go over the very, very edge where they meet in small back and forth strokes. I wouldn't use circular motions because it's gonna blend like you'll pull the, you'll pull the blue and then I'm over exaggerating here, but you'll pull the blue over onto the yellow and then around. And then, you know, once you get down here, you're gonna be grabbing yellow and pulling it up onto the blue and you'll get a very, first off, you'll get a much wider area where it's blended, but it's gonna start turning muddy. These colors are not gonna blend together. So just take your brush and very lightly and gently go back and forth in short little strokes to blend a little bit of the blue green onto the yellow and then a little bit of the yellow onto the blue green, but it's only gonna be at that transition point. You have to accept that they're not gonna blend together and then just move on. Okay, um, I'm just gonna finish up this eye. My baby's starting to fuss a little bit, so I wanna hurry up and turn off the camera so I can take care of her and be back later to show you a finished result. But I'm gonna finish up this eye. This is a smaller um, or medium blending brush. It is a smaller blending brush. I'm gonna go back into the shade confidence because I really I really like this color. I kind of want it to be the focal point of the look. And I'm gonna lay this on the outer lower lash line, wrap it around to meet where I put it in the outer corner. And I'll bring it about about halfway. I'm then gonna take a smudger brush. I intended to do this before and I, I didn't end up doing it. I intended to take the, br the shade Brave from Peridot and deepen up this outer corner. I'm not sure if I will. I kinda like, kinda like the way it is right now. Um, I'm gonna take the shade Brave though on a smudger brush and put it in the outer lower lash line and see what it adds to the look. Maybe I'll bring it up as well. I mean, it's adding a bit of smokiness. I really. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take it on that smudger brush and just carry it up a little bit into the upper lash line and just kind of brush it into the base of the lashes to smoke it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna angle the brush up as like a, a fan shape and work my way up into the blue from the outer corner. It's just a little, little bit. It's just to add a tiny bit more depth and dimension to that outer area. I don't want to cover the blue. I really like that blue color. Now, can you see a difference? Can I see a difference? Okay, I do see a difference. If I look, if I look at my two eyes next to each other, forget that this one doesn't have yellow. This one definitely has more of the teal blue green thing going on. And then this one has that as well, but then it's a slight, um, like a shade darker. But I didn't bring that darkness all the way through the blue because I don't want all of it to be, be darker. I just want the very, very outer edge to be darker. I hope you can see that on camera. I'm gonna take a small pencil brush and dip back into Outgoing, the yellow matte. I'm gonna carry this down from the inner corner all the way onto the lower lash line to meet the green mattes. But yellow is not always the best color for me to put under my eye because it can make me look kind of sick. This is a nice yellow for me. This is more of a of a, an orangey marigold sort of shade. Um, so it's not, 
it's not like a weak and sickly sort of yellow. A lemon yellow is also okay. But I'm also gonna take this small pencil brush. I've, I've color swatched it so it doesn't have the yellow on it anymore. And I'm gonna dip into the shade Peridot, which is the lime green shimmer in the Peridot palette. I'm gonna use this shade as an inner corner highlight. So I'm gonna spray it with setting spray or water because I like the way that my shimmers perform when they're sprayed. They're usually a little bit more metallic and I have a bit more control. And I'm gonna put this as an inner corner highlight right here. Ooh, look at that. That livened it up quite nicely. This is a nice lime green shade. It really is. Now, do I wanna carry it down? I, I don't think I'm gonna add additional products to the brush to carry it under here. I think what I'll do is I'll just take whatever's on the brush and drag it over to sort of blend its way into the yellow. So it's gonna be the yellow base with just a tiny bit of this lime green shimmer. And then for a waterline color, I'm taking a dark um, emerald green sort of shade. This is a creme gel liner from ColourPop in the shade, you hear my baby, she's starting to fuss, um, in the shade Canopy. It's in the shade Canopy from the Lush Life collection. I'm gonna run that on the whole lower lash line. All right, that's about the finished eye look. I am going to turn off the camera and take care of my children and finish up this eye look, and then I'll be back to show you the end result. Okay guys, here's how it turned out. I put on some black eyeliner, did a small wing, mascara, and then a bit of blush. I didn't do anything else on my face. I just didn't feel like it, so I didn't do my eyebrows or foundation or anything else. I do have some color on my lips. I have the ColourPop Lip Oil in the shade Smirk, and then I have the Wet n Wild Cloud Pout Marshmallow Lip Mousse in the shade Sugarholic. So this is just an orangey tint, and it, this eyeshadow look makes me think of the Lush Life palette from ColourPop, and when I think of that palette, I think of an orange lip, so I don't know, color association. Anyway, I think the eyeshadow look turned out really pretty. I like it a lot. I have been wanting for a while to pair these two palettes together. Um, the fact that I only used one shadow from the Sapphire palette really confirms for me that I think I'm gonna pass it along. I'll be doing a video for Sapphire for September, but then I think I'm gonna pass it along to someone else. I really, this is a great quality. I like the color story. The performance is beautiful. It's one of the best palettes from the Birthstone line out of the ones that I've tried anyway, but on myself and my skin tones, I have learned since buying this palette and trying a few others that this color story, like the dark blues and purples, tend to make me look quite tired and they, they sort of pull me down. They're not bright and lively on my face. And so as much as I may like it, I think that it's gonna be a better fit for someone else's coloring. So anyway, there you go, that's today's video. Thank you very much for hanging out with me and for clicking on my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. I'm gonna take, what am I gonna take? I'm gonna take something. I'm gonna take something. Hi babe. Hello. How are you? Did you have a good night? Yeah, I did. You sleep well? Yeah, and guess what? What? I'm not in pain anymore. Oh, good. That's exciting. Yeah, so maybe I can roller skate today. Maybe, after all your school's done. <laughs>